Hello everyone, this is Michael from the Bronx Science Machine Learning Club, and today we're going to present a very interesting demonstration that will be used for the club fair next year, known as a random walk. A random walk is a very interesting graph, which you can turn into an animation if you wanted to, that shows a cumulative sum being, you, being created over time. Now, a cumulative sum may sound very weird when I first say it, but it's also known as a running total and can be totally understood using this analogy. Imagine you have a starting number counter and a coin. Each time you flip a coin and get heads, you gain a point. If you get tails on that coin flip, you lose a point. If you flip the coin like a thousand times and you have a total of a positive three, that number is your cumulative sum. And this can be also shown by this graph over here. We start off with a current number of negative one and we jump and add plus one and minus one via these a's and we finally end up on our last value of zero. The random walk which demonstrates the cumulative sum is a totally stochastic process which means it's random each time you make it which makes it very interesting to see what results you get. It's relatively easy to code using the NumPy library and the matplotlib libraries, as NumPy is used for mathematical computations and matplotlib is used for plots. And these graphs can show pretty interesting things. And to show you what I mean, this graph over here is a graph of a random walk from 0 to 1000. Via editing magic, I'll show you a picture of the stock market to the left. These things look pretty similar, don't you think? I think so, indeed. And we'll come into applications of this random walk later and how this can apply to perfectly balanced sports teams. But more importantly, we'll show you how to take this static image to a grand animation. Let's get started. So as I said before, we're going to have to import the libraries in order to set up the random walk. We'll need the NumPy library for computations. We'll also need the matplotlib library in order to create our graphs. And since we'll be converting this static graph into an animation, we'll also need the matplotlib animation library, which you can obtain using matplotlib animation. However, since I want to show you this random walk inside Colab, we'll need to import specific methods in order to make this work inside Google Collaboratory. To do these, we will need to import from matplotlib a separate animation and RC methods. The RC method will change matplotlib to make it work inside Google Colab. Furthermore, because Google Collaboratory is inside an HTML environment, we'll also need to import the HTML method from IPython, which Collaboratory is based on. All right, let's run this. And we'll just begin coding. The first thing we'll need to do is define the random walk behavior, which I said earlier was a cumulative sum, a coin flip over many thousands of times. So we're going to create a method to do such things. And we'll call this random walk. Because we can flip the coins as many times as we want, and we can create more and more grappling graphs and stunning ones that can amaze any beginner audience, we want to do this over a long time. We don't want to do this over a short time, but we can change this depending on the variable n right here, which will be an integer. In this method, we will need to create an empty NumPy array which will hold our cumulative sum over time. And we'll just give it an empty list for now. We also want to change this empty list, empty NumPy array list, each x value. So like when we have number one, when we have an x value of one, as you see, the graph is over here, an x value of 200, it's over here, and 650, it might be over here and we need to change the cumulative sum over time. And we can emulate this using this variable n. So we can say for i in range n, 
or n is kind of similar to how long we want the random walk to go for, we'll need to create a variable item, and this variable will be our one or negative one. We haven't imported the random library. However, NumPy also has some random pseudo-random algorithms we can use, and it just so happens we can get the random function inside it, which gives us a random integer from 0 to 2. How can we convert 0 to 2, so it could either give us 0 or 1, to 1 or negative 1? Well, this we can do using the modulo operation. For those who are unfamiliar, this mod operation, in which this is pronounced item mod 2 equals 0, is the value you get when you divide the, the value right here, which is item, so it's 0 or 1, by this value, which is 2. So we can convert 0 or 1 to 1 or negative 1 by checking whether this 0 or 1 is even or odd. And this can be easily done using a modulo of 2. 0 mod 2 is 0 because 0 divided by 2 is equal to 0. However, 1 divided by 2 is equal to 0 over the remainder of 1. So if item mod 2 is 0, we can append to this list a value that can correspond to the 0, and I'm just going to make this negative 1. That's sort of an introduction to the module operator. We didn't really need to discuss it, but it's helpful for converting our range to a different range. So right here we're just replacing 0 to 2 with our 1 or negative 1 on the graph and what I discussed with the coin flip. And finally, our last operation is returning the cumulative sum over time used from the list. So what this will do is it will com if we start with like a the first value of 1, the, f the cumulative sum at that point is 1, but if we had a negative 1, so our two list elements are 1 and negative 1, our cumulative sum for the second part would be 0. I hope that's clear. And now we can actually display a static random walk graph. One of the first things we'll need to do is define for how long this random walk goes on for. 1000 makes it look pretty much like the stock market, so I'm going to stick with an n value of 1000. A graph always needs to have x and y values, but we'll need to create our x and y values and as I said that the n kind of is very similar to how long we want the random walk to go on for and is very similar to our x values. We can use the a range function from NumPy to create our x value range from 0 to n. So this x this x variable will contain all the numbers from 0 to 1000. Similar to when you're making a graph a, para a parabolic graph that you'll have like 1, 2, 3, 4 and you'll have 1, 4, 9, 16 as your y values. So the x values say constant while the val y values change. And our y values will be the random walk values up to n. Now we can begin making our plot. Personally, I like the style of ggplot from R, so I'm going to change the plot so it looks like this. And then we can chain, we can make our subplots. As a result, we can actually go set things straight in the axis. We can set the label of the x-axis to be x values, and we can set the label of the y values to be uh, label of the y-axis to be y values. And then we can actually set our title to be a random walk. And then finally, we can plot the x and y values with a red line. We can just use the abbreviation R to do this. And to make our ticks, sometimes the uh, x and y axis have ticks we can change. We can change the tick size with this tick params value, and we'll change them to have a font size of 12. And if we run, oh, we need to run everything here. If we run this, 
we get a random walk. This looks pretty crazy. We got this little peak over here, and it drops to a trough down here, and goes up and down. We get a really spike going on here, and it's completely random. As you see, our font size is pretty large, 0, 200, 1000. And our y value is actually dipped to around negative 15, so this cumulative sum gets to some pretty low numbers. But this doesn't need to be just fun in games. We can extract some applications from this. And the way we do this is by creating the x-axis. And we don't actually have an x-axis because we don't have our little line here at zero. We need to create it. So I'm going to create this value, oy, and this will be this function, np.zeros. This is kind of a handy function. When you give it the value n, it creates a list of zeros up to this length. So right now we're just creating 1,000 zeros. <laughs> and we can plot by using x, o, y, and a black line. As you see, we have a totally different random walk. This corresponds to like a statistic process. And if we look at this line, we can see it goes all the way down to negative 60, which is very, very low. And that's pretty amazing. And it goes up to 40. You can never predict the random walk. But extracting applications from it. Let's say we have a baseball team that is perfectly average. 50% of the time they win and 50% of the time they lose. We can look at this x-axis to see where the team will break even. Or they will get an equal amount of wins, losses to bring their win loss count to zero, and an equal amount of wins to bring their loss win counter to zero again. So if you look at this graph closely, we can see that the team initially does very well around here, but drops to break even at around two games, so this is a pretty terrible team. But then it goes back up again, and they start winning some games, but because they're they break even, and they're perfectly average, they drop back to zero streak at around, let's say, 25. The really interesting story is they lose like 60 games. That's pretty terrible. So this shows that you really want to cancel your game subscription to around 100, or this game will be like, these, this team will be really horrible. I'm sorry, guys, but you, I don't think you can come back from around 210 to... 610. I don't think you can do that. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. We can animate this graph and make it even better. So why don't we just get started and do this? One of the first things I like to do is create an animation number. You'll see why we do this in a second after we type in all our animation code. The first part of animation starts very similar to how we create our static graph. One interesting thing that we're going to change is we're going to set a Y limit. The animation is a little bit finicky, and we need to set it to be a specific value in order to see all the values in the graph. So while the Y values can change in our static graph above, we need to set it to specific values. So this random walk can only have y values that change from negative 100 to 100, which is not that limited at all. Most random walks don't get up to 100 or negative 100. And then we're going to set a different title, and this will be a special title of random walk animated. Here's where things get interesting. Now we have to define our animation behavior. And most tutorials show the random walk itself being animated. We can also animate the x equals zero line to make it a little extra interesting. We can reanimate it from where we just generically plotted it. How do we do this per se? Well, we first need to initialize empty lines. Whenever we plot something in Matplotlib, the result that we the return from the plot function is actually a line. It could be a, a parabola, a cubic, a quartic, or that random weird stock market line we saw earlier. But it just returns the properties of that line. Because we just want an empty graph 
at the beginning before we start animating and changing the properties of our random walk animated we need to just create empty starting point With, without any values inside these lists it doesn't it won't create a line so that's why we just put empty list and we get a nice and empty starting point we're also going to set the line width to 2 because that will make it easier to see. And we'll do the same thing for a separate line. This will be our x equals 0 line. The first step to animation is creating an initialization function. This is what I meant by just setting both of our lines to have x and y values of nothing. When we create an initialization function, you can think of this as a time step of zero. Nothing's animated yet, and this is just a starting point on things to come. We're just going to create our initialization function, and we'll just say to ourselves the first step will be an empty plot. We already have an empty plot with line 1 and line 2 because these have no values. All we need to do is set the data for these values again to empty. You might ask yourself why are we doing this? You already set these values to empty already. Why do we need to set them again? The short story is when we reset the random walk and redo the animation we need to reset all the values back to being nothing so the random walk gets rid of all its lines and starts afresh or else you'll see artifacts of the previous run. And for each of these functions, you need to return the lines you are animating. We were animating two lines, the random walk and the line x equals 0, so we return these lines in a tuple. Keep in mind that you need to put a comma once you create the axis step plot, because these value, the axis step plot actually returns a tuple, because you can plot multiple lines in the same plot. So keep in mind, these are tuples, not just single values. For animating, so this this is where the random walk changes for each time step, we need to give the animator, so matplotlib itself, what values that are changing. And we're going to establish this, this, establish this using these variables, lists, called xdata and ydata. For the random walk, I'm going to call xodata and yodata for the line x equals 0. And here is our animation function. We'll call each time step i. That's uh, the standard generic definition of the animate function. So think of the time step i being each x, each time step we progress one x value. So at time step zero, we have an empty graph. At time step one, we can start creating our graph at y equals 0, or this line, the first white line. And we can plot our black line here, and we can plot our red line here. And create this little dot right over here. At time step i equals 2, we move this red dot over here, and we move our black line a little bit to the right. And we'll repeat this procedure until our line is finished and we've reached n equals 1,000, x equals 1,000, our termination. So our x data should append this i, because i is, a lot of things act like the x coordinate, n is our total collection of things, x coordinates, i is our single x coordinate, and we're going to do the same thing for our, our XO data. And for our Y data, what do we do? Well, we want the we want the random walk to be animated as well for each X coordinate we encounter. So right here, when we reach time step I equals a thousand, we only reach this line. We want to plot this little variable right here, our red line right here, and our black line right here. 
But how do we sample the line? How do we sample our random walk range from each of these x coordinates? It's, if we think a little bit, we can just use simple indexing. If we're just index, if we just need the x coordinate from our y range, we'll take the y coordinate by indexing it by the x coordinate. So it's sort of like if you have a function f of x, if we input a variable x equals 5, we'll get our y coordinates instead of just the y range in our x domain. So we'll set our y data and we'll append y i. Okay? And we'll do the same thing for y o data. Remember, o stands for origin. And we'll just say it's equal to y o i. In order to put the animation into effect, we also need to update the lines with the new data that they correspond to. So we'll set line 1 to our x data and y data. And we'll set line 2 to xo data and yo data. And of course we must return them as well because matplotlib always wants to know which lines are being animated and which ones are not. And that is our animation functions. Phew. Let's run this. And as you see, we get our animated graph, but there's no animation. We just have our x equals zero line. Hey, you fooled me. Where's my animation? Well, don't worry. Don't worry. We're going to make it right now. We haven't actually started the animation yet. That's why it's not appearing. To create the animation, we need to actually put all those animation imports into effect. We're going to create a variable anim and that's equal to animation. Remember we imported matplotlib's animation library up above at the very first step. And we're going to create a func animation, short for function animation, which means this animation depends on functions. The first thing we need to give it is the figure. The second thing we need to give it is our animate function. So what it is animating? We defined it above. It also wants a keyword argument for the initialization function and what to set the graph to when we're resetting it. Luckily enough, for us, we've already created an initialization function called init. We also need to know how much to update the graph for, so how long it goes for, and we'll update it until we reach n. So we'll update it until we get like to a thousand. The interval will tell us how fast this graph will go while updating. If we set it to like 30, that means this graph will go super fast to get to the end. But we want it to take its time, so we can set our interval to just be a small number like 5. And finally, our last parameter is called blit. This is a nice computer uh, vision boolean argument. And usually you should set it to true because it's it allows for compressing some of the graphics into one single graphic. I know it might seem weird, but it allows for faster compression. And animations take a long time to show up in Google Colab. The less time we need to wait, the better. And finally, to make this show up in Google Colab, we need to use our RC function. So RC this sets like matplotlib options. This will tell for any animation we want it to appear in an HTML as a JavaScript HTML. So when we run anim right here, we'll get our animation. A supplemental thing we can do, and I'm not going to show it here because Google Colab and, well, yeah, Google Colab and saving the animation don't really work well together. So I'm going to comment this out, but feel free to comment RC and anim and run this code instead. If we want to save the animation, all we need to do is call anim.save and we're going to put in an f string and write random walk anim num dot mp4. If you're not familiar with f strings, this will take our anim num variable, which I said that we're going to talk about later, and place it right here. So 
because I have our anim number to zero, this will write the animation as random walk zero that mp4. And this will place it in the files right here, and we can double click and it'll run in our environment. Or wherever you're running, Windows Movie Player or QuickTime if you're running on a Mac. And then, because we want the animation number to change each time, so we don't want to continually save the animation in the same file, we'll add the number 1 to animation number. This means when we, run the, when we want a completely new animation, we'll just run this, it'll set it to 4, and then we'll get animation random walk 4 to mp4. So without further ado, let's run. Unfortunately, running this on Google Colab will actually take a while because it has to, remember, go through 1,000 x values. We run. Oh, I said to loop. I said to once. Our animation is fully done rendering. As you see, our black line was completely replaced to this blue line for our x equals zero. And let's just run it one more time. We have our random walk being animated. It's kind of a boring graph because it never goes above the x equals zero line, but it's fun nonetheless. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you join the club next year. From Bronx Science Machine Learning Club, this is Michael, signing out. Thank you.